How's it going guys? So I'm going to discuss updated slash refined viewpoints on step one prep summer 2024 onward. Just put out a clip a few days ago on 2CK prep. So natural sequence OMG is one I put out a clip on step one refined viewpoints. Those who've been following my content for a while know general things I've advocated for slash recommended. So I'll give you uh, my newer viewpoints. Okay. There's two camps of you studying for step one. There's gonna be those of you who are, let's say IMG post-grad, you wanna get the steps over with and you can just study linearly for step one followed by step two. There's gonna be those of you who are second year med school, okay? And maybe you're doing your comp CBSC for your school followed by just step one. And so you're doing things maybe more subject specific by module while you're going through classes, i.e. maybe you got three weeks on GI and you have three weeks on cardio, et cetera. So I'll discuss both camps. Four things you're going to need to do for both camps, okay? The first thing is QBank, Amboss, or UWorld. You can choose either. They're non-superior to each other. I've made 19 clips probably discussing Amboss versus UWorld versus USMLA RX, okay? Pros and cons of the different QBanks. You can open a separate YouTube tab, dive into all that stuff. I'm not going to get highly specific on it right now. But you can choose a Q bank. It doesn't matter. If let's say you're first year med school or you're very early in second year right now, you can do multiple Q banks because you've got so much time. But in general, whether you're post grad or whether you're uh, going through uh, second year med school, you need to do minimum one Q bank and one Q bank is sufficient. Choose Amboss or U World. It doesn't matter. I want you doing four to eight blocks per day of 10 questions. 40 to 80 per day, untimed, tutor, random mode. That's ideal, okay? Especially if you're post-grad for macro retention. Blocks of 10, I've talked about, can help eliminate ADHD. Once again, this will be a bit repetitive. You can open a separate tab and you can write Melman, QBank, ADHD. And I've made like 16 clips discussing that, all right? So if you're post-grad, you're gonna spend two-ish months going through QBank, all right? Let's say 40, 80 questions per day. If you're in second year med school, you're still gonna do that. And I want you doing random mode. And you say, but what about my modules that I'm doing with school? Like I've got an endocrine quiz in three weeks or I've got a pulmonary in three weeks. Shouldn't I be doing questions specific uh, from QBank for those subjects? The answer is it's not cookie cutter for everybody. There's time and place. Students have, who've had issues with school before, I might recommend they do specific QBank questions by subject, but generally what you can do is you're gonna do random mode in QBank, as I just said, but simultaneous to that, you're gonna do my PDF, and this is for both camps. You're gonna do my PDF in a subject, let's say pulmonary, plus you're gonna do my playlist on the YouTube in that subject, okay? So whether you're post-grad, you're going through QBank, you're gonna be doing the PDF and the YouTube MCQ simultaneous to QBank. If you're in MS2 right now, you're gonna be doing random mode in QBank, but for your pulmonary quiz, let's say in three weeks, simultaneous to random QBank, you're gonna be doing the pulmonary PDF, let's say 10, 15 pages per day. You're gonna be doing, let's say 10 to 15 questions per day for my YouTube pulmonary MCQ playlist, okay? So you get a bit of subject specific prep, the PDF and the MCQ amalgamation, simultaneous to your random mode in QBank, okay, for both groups. Now, uh, as well, uh, the fourth thing you're gonna do is the NBME exams. I want you doing 20, through 31, 22, 20 through 24 offline, followed by free 120, followed by 25 through 31 for most people, okay? Some students get highly emotional about this notion of free 120 supposedly being more accurate and hence they wanna do it late. Absolute garbage, okay? I don't know where this is manifested from, maybe nonsense on EG Reddit, but I put free 120 generally before NBME 25 because our goal is to maximize your scores on the new NBMEs. That's the goal. Hence, we do QBank first to get you to pass level. Then we do the offline NBMEs. And all this is geared toward ultimately getting you the highest score on the new NBMEs. And once you have 65%-ish, that's pass for USMLA, okay? So I like a buffer of 68% on the NBMEs. Students are getting 63, you're not gonna pass. Okay. Are there anecdotes? Are there stories of people getting lower scores than they pass? It can happen, but my students, I'm not going to allow them to sit if they're not getting bare minimum 65% of the NBMEs. 
And if their school is forcing them to sit against my recommendations, I mean, that's out of our control, but it's not going to be a surprise if a student passes versus, versus doesn't pass. I can easily look at a student's NBMEs and say, well, you're consistently getting 68, 69, 71. I mean, that's an easy pass, okay? Versus if you're getting 65 on the dot, you're literally passing by a single question. So I want more of a buffer, as I said. So whether you're post-grad and you're studying linearly, you can just say, I can three months, four months studying for step one, or you're on MS2, both situations. You're going to be doing AMBOSS or UWorld. You're going to be doing my PDFs, my YouTube MSQ simultaneous to QBank, and you're ultimately going to be ending with NBMEs 20 through 24, free 120, and then 25 through 31, okay? As far as the techniques, as far as dissecting the NBMEs, I usually give students two days per NBME, okay? So you sit in NBME on one day, you start the review, that review can spill into the second day, and when you think about the number of NBMEs you have to go through, we're talking generally about a month. The final month of your prep should be nothing but NBMEs, okay, supplemented with my PDFs and YouTube MCQs when you're not specifically reviewing those NBMEs. I'll obviously put out more clips discussing uh, different aspects of prep in detail. You know the deal. Subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.